This is the Figures in the Sky Initiative update. Um, it's been uh, done under myself and Dr. Rebecca Charbonneau. And I'm pretty sure everyone has a general idea of what the initiative entails, but just to give a rundown, um, through the Rollback Library, the Figures in the Sky Initiative aims to uplift and highlight the astronomical heritages of historically excluded peoples in order to thoughtfully include them in the history and research of astronomy. By doing so, the research conducted under FITSI will subvert and rectify the hegemonic racism and colonialism that have shaped and influenced the field of astronomy. The initial stages of FITSI have consisted of introductions to different scientific perspectives outside of the traditional Western worldview, as well as studying the criticism surrounding the racist and colonialist nature of astronomical observations on indigenous lands. By researching more indigenous approaches to astronomy as a science, with consideration of humans' relationship to nature, we have been able to purposefully examine multiple astronomical cultures to study as a prototype for future astronomical heritage research. Um, the progress so far within the first few weeks of BITC have um, included, with me personally, getting a better understanding of scientific uh, perspectives and um, understanding, as well as getting an understanding of, uh, understanding of like, nature and scientific approaches outside of the traditional Western perspective. And that included a, ver a variety of readings, including Green Sweetgrass by Robin Wall Kimmerer, um, which had an, emph an emphasis on symbiotic reciprocity with nature and the universe found in various indigenous cultural astronomies. A Place for Stories, Nature, History, and Narrative by William Cronon, which uh, gave an understanding of how bias can influence historical narratives, especially hegemonic ideologies, and imaginative cosmos, the colonial heritage of radio astronomy, and the search for extraterrestrial life, excuse me, extraterrestrial intelligence by Rebecca Charbonneau, which uh, gave an understanding of the lasting effects of racialized colonialism on astronomy and its practices slash research acumen. Um, within the research that I've done and some of the readings that I have included at the end, there are a couple of uh, key terms I think should be highlighted. Um, those, and if you guys um, already know what these terms mean, um, that, that makes it easier on me for uh, giving you guys an understanding of uh, the context of this research. So one of the terms is archaeoastronomy, which is the study of how people have historically observed, understood, and interpreted universal phenomena in the sky. Ethnoastronomy, which is the study of the astronomical beliefs and practices of different cultures. And I'm sure this term is pretty well known, but cosmology, which is a branch of astronomy that studies the origin and development of the universe. And there's a pretty fitting uh, quote from Brain Sweetgrass, which says, cosmologies are a source of identity and orientation to the world. They tell us who we are. Um, this is just a couple of uh, screenshots and notes that I've taken over the past few weeks regarding the readings um, from Brain Sweetgrass and Rebecca's um, article, Imaginative Cosmos. And also the last one in the end is notes that I've taken on Aztec asterisms, which leads me into introducing um, the cosmology that we'll be studying as a prototype for FITC, which is Mesoamerican and South American cosmologies. Um, the images pictured here are just a few examples of the, um, the astronomical comparisons and uh, astronomical and mythological representations in different Mesoamerican and South American cultures. So on the left, uh, there's a there's an image of the Milky Way, but within the Maya civilization, specifically the Quiche Maya, because there's multiple ethnic groups that are within these different cultures and empires. And as we proceed forward with the research, I'll be able to expound on that more. Um, within the Quiche Maya, um, the Milky Way was known as Shibalba, which was their idea of the underworld um, within Mayan astro I'm, not, I'm sorry, not astrology, astronomy. They had three ideas of what really constituted the world. Um, one was the skies, which was um, the dwellings of the gods. Um, the earth, which was where humans and animals really um, dwelled. And then Shibalba, which was their underworld and where the dead resided. Um, at the top right, there is an image of the planet Venus, as well as an Aztec deity. And his name was Tlaluis Calpantecutli um, in Nahuatl. And I'll, I'll be sure to add a couple of the pronunciations of the different um, 
indigenous terms and names, just so everyone can have an understanding how to pronounce these correctly. Um, and he was a prominent deity that was um, featured in Aztec um, astro uh, astro astro astronomical um, representation and mythology. And just for clarification, going forward, I'll also um, refer to the Aztecs as the Mexica because like the Maya, there were multiple ethnic groups that uh, constituted the Aztec empire. But the Mexica is the most well-known as well as I, I believe they made the bulk of the Aztec empire in terms of uh, ethnicities. And underneath is an image of Machu Picchu, was in, which was an ancient Incan citadel that had um, quite a bit of significant um, connections to astronomical and cosmology beliefs. And just so an understanding of why these cultures were chosen, um, and just to uh, introduce these cultures further, um, we'll be focusing on Mesoamerican civilizations such as the Aztec or the Mexica, the Maya, and the Olmec. And the Olmec, they preceded both the Maya and the Aztec, and they have a lot of, all three have overlapping um, myths and uh, cosmological beliefs that we'll be investigating further. And then um, in South American civilizations, uh, we'll be focusing on the Inca, in the Inca which uh, includes the Quechua and Atacameños slash Lican Antai uh, ethnic groups. And even though these are technically in two different areas of Latin America and South America, I want to include the Inca because they have some similarities to the Mesoamerican civilizations that we'll be studying but because they had their own exclu exclusive belief systems, I felt it would be good to provide some different perspectives of these particular um, cultural cosmologies. And these cultures slash civilizations were chosen for their close proximity to one another, um, their individual and overlapping relationships with the stars and other celestial bodies, the general public's extant basic knowledge of these cultures, such as with the Maya and I feel like we're all aware of um, what happened in 2012 with the misunderstanding of the mind calendar. Um, it's actually a good thing that we have that somewhat general basic knowledge of uh, Mesoamerican civilization and culture because it'll help us get um, the general public to have an understanding and interest to um, further their own knowledge of these cultures. Um, and then their locations were also, the reasons why they were chosen was for the locations that hold significance in both historical astronomy and contemporary astronomy, such as the Akatama Desert uh, that has the Omlo uh, radio telescope and areas in North Mexico, which will hold the next generation very large array. And pictured to the right are um, three images that uh, represent the different cultural locations of these civilizations, not all of them, but some. Um, at the top is Tenochtitlan, which uh, was, which is where current Mexico City is located, and was the epicenter of the Aztec Empire. Um, down the underneath that is Tikal in Guatemala, which was a um, very significant um, temple and uh, mines uh, citadel, which had a lot of significance with um, astronomical pra practices of the Maya civilization. And underneath is La Venta Tabasco, Mexico which um, was one of the more important sites of the Olmec civilization that preceded both the Maya and the Aztec. Um, current and future astronomy in these areas include um, the Atacama Large Millimeter Array radio telescope in the Atacama Desert in Chile. Um, this desert's conditions with this high altitude and lack of light pollution and base zero to no, like little to no cloud cover it, it's made it very ideal for astronomical observation and research. And historically, the Atacama Indians people have utilized the Atacama Desert for cultural practices related to astronomy. However, within recent years, the Atacama Indians have struggled with the Alma radio telescope's location on their indigenous land because it infringes on their current cultural practices. Um, the large millimeter telescope, Alfonso Serrano and Parque Nacional Pico de Orizaba, uh, Sierra Negra Pueblo, Mexico. Um, that's the world's largest single aperture telescope and that's located in the Puebla, Mexico um, state, as well as 
Don Antipra Observatory in San Andres, Cholula, Puebla, Mexico. Um, they're both located in Puebla, Mexico, and the Tonantzintla Observatory specifically is located at El Instituto, Instituto Nacional Astrofísica Optima y Electrónica, which is a historic, within that area is, um, has a lot of historically significant um, mountain ranges and volcanoes that are related to um, Aztec uh, cultural mythology and uh, religious beliefs. And then underneath, uh, I mentioned the next generation, very large array, which will have a location, a few locations actually in Northern Mexico. Um, I, I think we're all familiar with it. It's a future, it's a future center meter, centimeter to meter wave interferometer. And there'll be multiple locations in continental North America. And although I didn't find any extensive evidence that any indigenous groups within North Mexico or um, in Puebla, Mexico, having issues with these particular uh, astronomical structures being um, built within these areas, I wouldn't be surprised if I come across some um, some uh, conflict between astronomers in these areas and the indigenous people who inhabit it. Um, right here, these are some Aztec asterisms that are featured on the Figures in the Sky website that, um, I, I forget her name, I apologize. I think her name is Nadi. Um, she created this website to um, highlight different cultural um, representations of constellations and was, the, was Dana's inspiration for creating this initiative. And I was tasked excuse me, tasked to identify two of the unidentified asterisms on this website. And I'm pretty sure I got it because I cross-referenced the shapes of these particular constellations on the website, asterisms for, because they're not technically recognized constellations. And then um, in this document that I will link at the, at the end of the presentation, um, it was a document that was written by a Dominican um, priest named Diego Duran, who with the help of Aztec elders was able to um, write down and record some Aztec astronom astronomical and cosmo cosmological um, beliefs that they had. And due to the Spanish um, uh, colonizing the Aztecs um, within the early 1500s, a lot of these writings and records were destroyed but he was able to um, save some of this uh, astronomical information for future generations. And two of these um, constellations that were found in this document, they correlate with the asterisms on the Figures in the Sky website. The top one is the Rattlesnake constellation in Scorpius, and it's represented a uh, month 13 of the Aztec calendar and was a symbol of religious communion. And underneath is the Frog constellation in Gemini, and the Aztecs prayed, the, according to the legend uh, associated with this particular constellation, the Aztecs prayed for rain in month five of the calendar and received more than enough rain for the crops in month six. This last um, image is an image of three, uh, two particular deities. Um, I'm, I'm sure that some may have heard of Quetzalcoatl, but um, just for context, he was an ancient god known as the feathered serpent. Um, depending on what particular myth is um, being studied, Quetzalcoatl symbolizes, symbolizes death and resurrection. And together with his twin brother, Xolotot, um, the dog-headed god of fire and lightning, they represent the planet Venus. According to mythology, Quetzalcoatl's nemesis was Tezcatlipoca, the god of jaguars, whose spots represented the starry sky, the volcanic glass obsidian, night and the earth. This Katlipoka tricked Kesselquat into getting drunk and committing sinful acts, forced Kesselquat to look upon himself in his obsidian mirror and banished him from his kingdom in the city state of Tula. And as a side note, um, Tula was historically the capital of the Toltec civilization that preceded the Aztecs. And like the Olmec, um, the Aztecs um, was inspired by the um, Toltec civilization that preceded them with their religious and cultural beliefs. Stricken with deep shame and regret, Kosukawat lit the pyre and committed suicide. However, his ashes and his heart ascended to the heavens and fully transformed to the deity Trawiskapantekutli, who solely represented the morning star Venus. And as a side note also, um, Tezcatlipoca, he was also represented by Ursa Major, the constellation. 
within um, FICTI, the next steps we hope to um, achieve, we hope to continue to make progress in connecting Aztec and other Mesoamerican and South American asterisms to our extant knowledge of constellations and discover their historical and cultural significance. Due to a gap in sources that have already cross-referenced some of these asterisms and constellations, we hope to find more in-depth knowledge of these ast astronomy cultures by involving indigenous cultural experts, astronomers, and practitioners. Conducting oral history interviews may be a possibility in the future if we have luck contacting members slash descendants of these cultures. By directly involving actual people who have tangible connections to these cultures, we'll be able to gather more cohesive evidence as well as provide the cultural astronomy's research under FITSI, proper representation and cultural respect. And this last page is just a couple of the links that have that I referenced throughout my research and I included in this presentation, as well as a couple of my own uh, writings, including an analysis on eclipse imagery that was utilized in Aztec slash Mexica mythology and a preliminary annotated bibliography of sources with notes attached to them. Um, and then at the bottom is a link to the Figures in the Sky website.